Wow. Wow. Terrible show tonight. What's up to all you um, wrestling fans from The Godfather, Soldiers Who Swimming? Man, I'm going to rant tonight. Stoop. The name of my topic is Stupid in Savannah. Now, about to say about this main event. Michael Cole in commentary says, um, um, what happened was Braun Strowman interfered in the match. Sorry about that. Braun Strowman interfered main event. Braun Strowman, Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch. Braun Strowman interfered in the match. Braun Strowman came in, he was chasing after the ju after Judgment Day. Dumb dumb JD. He's gonna chase on a dumb dumb JD and and Finn. He's chasing him and then what was Ron Strowman accidentally hit Becky Becky Lynch with his, with his steel cage door. Michael Cole said that dumb, that damn dumb dumb that damn Dominic. Well, Michael Cole, I disagree because it's actually. Ron Showman's fault as much as it's his. Because Ron Showman was the one that accidentally hit Becky Lynch with a steel cage door when Becky Lynch was about to was about to um fall come out. But I'm gonna but I'm gonna get to that get 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 get, get um get to that look um a little bit a little later. But tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna my topic tonight is called stupid stupid in Savannah. But before I do, I got to uh, open up a little song for all of you tonight. For those of you who know that today is the fifth, the fortieth anniversary of the movie, um, thirtieth anniversary of the, of the movie The Flintstones, starring John Goodman, Rick Moranis, Rosie O'Donnell, Elizabeth Perkins, Kai and Kyle McLaughlin, and Halle Berry. I'm gonna close, open up the show with the the, the the song from the movie, um, the, which is the rock and nineties rock and roll version by the B. Two is called Meet the Flintstones, a little rock version from the like based on rock version of the song based on the animated sitcom, 1960s anime sitcom, which is the version of the movie that celebrates its 30th anniversary today. My childhood movie. So um here it is to open up the show by the B-52s, or should I say BC 52s, Meet the Flintstones. In honor of the 30th anniversary of Meet the Flintstones, so stick around. Got a lot to say about tonight. Here it is. Yabba dabba 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 goo. It's not dumb dumb. It's really not um it's um what happened tonight is not, is not, is literally not, it's both tonight, it's both Dum Dum's fault, and it's Dum Dum's fault, and Braun Strowman's fault, that they, they got that, they screwed Becky. We have a good time, we have a good old time. Wilma! Yabba dabba do, 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 yabba dabba do. Story. All you are wrong. Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch, and screw Becky. 
live through Becky. Yeah. Oh, All I can say is this last Sunday, Saturday at King of the Ring. Becky Lynch didn't screw Becky Lynch. Live. I mean, dumb. Like, Becky Lynch didn't screw Becky Lynch. Dumb, dumb. Screw Becky Lynch. Just like Mr. Man, just like when Mr. Man said that um, Brett didn't screw Brett. That, that, Vince, that he didn't screw Brett and Brett screwed Brett. Yeah. What a shitstorm we got tonight in Savannah. Stupid, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna change my little topic. Stupid and a shitstorm in Savannah. That's the name of my topic. Stupid. In a shitstorm in Savannah. That's right. That's what all song that all you just heard a little song, uh, rock and roll version of '90s rock version of Meet the Flintstones by the B Fifty Twos. Man, man, you, man, Stephanie, Stephanie, your, your, your husband, Triple H, is not doing a good job. Once you're, you know what, once your father, Vince, is found guilty of all his sex acts, I hope your husband rehires you back. And we'll have two, two own, own people. Owners of WWE, Ari Emanuel, and you, and you, and you will make your husband Hunter do everything. He, you tell him, you tell him to do. Stop um, shoving. I'm a, much as um, I like what she did to Rhea Ripley. I, I like it. I like what she did as much as I don't, I'm not a fan of Rhea Ripley anyway. But stop shoving, uh, make and make make him stop um shoving Liv Morgan in our throats and Nia, my whole Jackson, others. Let's get down to business tonight. Let's get down to business tonight. Let's see. Uh. What can I start off with? Let's see, um, Okay, the opener show with the, um, the Raw Women's Champion Liv Morgan is shown entering the arena early today. Her opponent for tonight, former champion Becky Lynch, arrives shortly after they compete in a steel cage match for after the championship later tonight. And then in the 2024 King of the Ring, Gunther, um, King of the Ring Gunther discusses victory over Randy Orton. Kaiser is in ring. Luger Kaiser is in the ring. Kaiser de and deman um, demands his crowd's attention to acknowledge the ring general, the king of the ring, Gunther. Gunther, who defeated Randy Orton in, in the finals of the king of the ring tournament this past Saturday, makes his way to the ring, holding his crown. Gunther gets in the ring and looks pleased. Gunther embraces Kaiser in the center of the ring. 
commentators aggressive conversation controversial Randy with his shoulder being up on the pin, final pinfall. They mentioned that Paul Triple H was vet. Said the referee's decision is final due to the final. Due to the win, Gunther will, will challenge for a World Heavyweight Championship match at SummerSlam 2024. Gunther stands in the ring, and the crowd is buzzing. Gunther looks at the crown and begins to speak. The crowd loudly boos. Gunther says on Saturday he beat Randy Orton. He is now the rightful king of the ring. With that being said, he earned his the opportunity to challenge for to challenge the World Heavyweight Champion at SummerSlam 2024. Gunther wants to talk about the current champion, Damian Priest. Gunther says he's followed his path. Since Rhea Ripley has been out with an injury that I like, that's what she gets for what, what, what she did to Liv Morgan. Priest stepped up, and I hope she doesn't. And by the way, I hope she doesn't come back and get get back to her Rawls title. She had it because she had it um for. for like it for like eight days. Priest stepped up and took responsibility. Gunther is a man who succeeds when he takes over responsibility. The Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship Black Prestige was on Gunther to step up and become the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. The crowd is booing him. The crowd, the, the King King of the Ring performing Black Prestige. Again, he stepped up and raised it to levels and heights never seen before. Now the World Heavyweight Championship is lacking prestige because the champion won it by taking a shortcut. World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest makes his way makes his way to the ring alongside Finn Balor and Vadim Madonna for the Judgment Day. Priest will defend the championship in two weeks from Saturday against Drew McIntyre at Clash of the Castle. Priest stands in the ring along with Gunther. Balor, McDonald, and Kaiser are outside. Priest says, incredibly prestige, shortcuts. Gunther is the king of the ring with that adorable crown to prove it. Gunther gets a title shot at SummerSlam, but does he really think he earned it? Everyone saw he, how, how he, he didn't beat Randy Orton. Gunther proved nothing. If he wants a pat on the back, he'll get it. Gunther wants to take credit for it, something he can take credit for costing Randy Orton a, a shot. Priest cashed in, cashed in because he earned a briefcase in a ladder match. That's how that works. He cashed in just like the others have before. That before him. Before him. Sorry. That's how that works. Does Gunther get does Gunther get how business works around here? Where I mean, business around here works. I mean, well, I mean, well, work works around here. Never who cares. Priest can teach him a lesson. Gunther doesn't care what Priest thinks of his, this. Gunther focuses on facts. The fact he is the king of the ring. If Priest is still the champion at SummerSlam 2024. He'll face him for the title. In terms of teaching him about business, maybe Priest can. Business isn't Gunther's expertise. Gunther has been waiting for every, for anyone who could teach him anything once the bell rings. Gunther can teach Priest can teach Priest about the business, but he can teach him about this great sport. Priest can give him a business lesson before SummerSlam 2024 and address him as king. Or he can give give it after SummerSlam 2024 and address him as World Heavyweight Champion. Priest says he respects what Gunther can do in the ring and respects his independent title reign. As a champion, what can Gunther teach him that he doesn't really know? They go to war at SummerSlam. Drew McIntyre's music hits and the Scottish Warrior makes his way to the ring. This past Saturday, Paul Triple H Levesque, the game, announced that McIntyre was cleared to compete. A CM Punk chant picks up. McIntyre says he has no he has to address this quickly, but they'll never shut up. CM Punk has been back six months for six months, and McIntyre has been 
highlight of his his return of his return. If he didn't injure him, Punk would have never would have screwed up and been fired with nowhere else to go. McIntyre addresses the man in the ring and says he's no more contender. He'll be champion in less than three weeks. Gunther leaves the ring without an incident. Priest says he's not looking past McIntyre. He knows what will happen when they're done. McIntyre says he's trying to help Priest and spreading himself too thin. The Judgment Day is screwing up left and right. Dum Dum went all the way to Saudi Arabia to screw up. It seems ever since Mammy got hurt, the real leader, the group has gone to hell. Makatar tells Priest to focus on what's important, himself, and what that World Health World Championship. Makatar wants to paint a picture. Wade Barrett, Pitt Finley, William Regal, and the British Bulldog, they're UK legends. And they have won exactly zero. WWE World Championships. McIntyre is the only person from the UK to win that world title, and they and he did it three times. Soon it will be four. McIntyre tells Priest to do some tape study. Watch when he thought Roman Reigns. The fans were so crazy that they broke Reigns. If it weren't for Solo, he'd be a champion. Now it's time for a geography lesson because they don't teach that in America. A a, a USA chant picks up. McIntyre says he's an American citizen. McIntyre says Wales is far from Scotland. The fans were still nuts. All Scottish fans are like him. McIntyre is about to take the bloody title. Priest chuckles and asks if that's really the game plan to get under his skin. Priest isn't afraid of the crowd booing him. Priest has made a living of proving people wrong. Priest wants to talk the truth. Is McIntyre's wife going to be there? What's her name? Uh-oh. McIntyre warns him. Priest says he just wanted to see if he can get under his skin. But he also wanted to see if he's a man enough to do something about it. Ron Strowman's music hits. McIntyre leaves the ring. Strowman walks up to the World Heavyweight Champion and goes face-to-face -face with him. Priest backs up and points to McDonald. McDonald looks a little worried. A lot of this to get this from WrestleMania.com. I mean WrestleMania.com. A long meandering segment that they didn't have a ton of heat. I think they thought Gunther would have more heat, more heat because of the competition finish at the King and Queen King and Queen the Ring. But it wasn't there. They waited like it would be. Then it was Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre coming out. Coming out. Coming out doing your turn, my turn promos. Not a great start to not a great to start um, Monday Night Raw. And he's right. WrestleMania.com is absolutely right. Now we we'll go to the match. JD McDonald versus Finn with Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman. We join this match in progress. McDonald gets in the ring and charges charges, but Strowman catches him him and easily presses him above his head. McDonough, McDonough eventually slides off, but Strowman throws him into the corner, into the, into the corner. McDonough tries to avoid him, but Strowman e easily lifts and slams him on the mat. Finn Balor checks on McDonough at ringside. Strowman yells at Balor and headbutts McDonough down. Strowman hits a big forearm to the chest in the corner. Strowman quietly throws McDonald across the ring and poses. McDonald sidesteps an avalanche, but Strowman quickly responds with an uppercut. Strowman causes and slams him down before kicking 
him in the ribs. McDonald tries to chop chop at him, but they have no effect. Strowman chops him down and holds up his a fist. Strowman shoves him in, in the, to the corner and connects with a with an avalanche. Strowman headbutts him down and shakes off the impact from McDonald with his large head. Strowman puts him in the corner and charges for an avalanche, but McDonald clips the knee. Strowman hits the ring post with his shoulder and falls out of the ring. McDonald gets wants a count. You see Strowman getting up. McDonald charges and gets a chop back. Chop block at ringside. Back from the break, Strowman shows McDonald shows McDonald back. He rebounds with a drop kick. Manon ties the injured knee in the in the ropes, but Strowman knocks him back. Strowman hits a leaping clothesline. Strowman claps him the mat a few times and shoves McDonald back away before hitting a big back body drop. Strowman quickly claps to the mat. Claps to the mat. Crowd runs over and pulls McDonald away from the ring. Strowman gets up and is lifting around. He sees Bow checking on McDonald, and the crowd knows what's coming. Strowman exits the ring and hobbles around the ringside to the area to, area to crush McDonald with Strowman Express. Strowman gets McDonald in the ring and gets him. Strowman lifts McDonald, but Balor gets on the apron. Strowman drop, drops McDonald and bangs Balor into the ring the hard way. Strowman lifts McDonald. Balor distracts the, distracts the referee as Carlito runs down to hit Strowman from behind. Strowman turns around and angrily grabs Carlito by the hair before punching him down. McDonald hits Strowman with a headbutt and a chop clock. McDonald hits the ropes, but Strowman scoops him up for a big power slam to pick up the win. Then Carlito and, and Carlito and Balor immediately double team Strowman. Strowman powers them away. Strowman sends Balor out of the ring and Carlito shoves Carlito over the top rope. Strowman poses and absorbs a chair shot to the back from McDonald. Crowds chant, You fucked up! You fucked up! Strowman slaps the chair out of McDonald's hand. McDonald's, McDonald and Baylor and Carlito run away. And get this from Russell.com. That was an essentially glorified, drawn out squash match still after match. Still, after everything he's gone through in the past year, it's great to see Braun Strowman back in the wrestling. He's got a point. The show is just garbage. Backstage interview. Kathy Kelly is backstage with Raw Women's Champion Liv Morgan. Does she have any remorse how she beat Becky? No, she did. Doesn't she says? Um. She says um. I'm still, she says she, yeah, Liv Morgan says she's still, um, Raw Women's Champion. She's, I mean, she's a new Raw Women's Champion. She wouldn't have done it without Ray, without, without um, Dominic Mysterio. He, she didn't know, um, he put, played such a role, but had no remorse. Still, she's never beaten Becky Lynch straight up. Night they'll face in a steel cage match with nowhere to run or hide. Morgan will come out 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 victorious. She says, "Watch me." Let's give a little script about the headlines and all that stuff. Shit. A little backstage segment. Finn Balor is backstage with Carlito, asking why it took long for for him to come out. Carlito says he was waiting for the right moment. World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest walks up and says that plan didn't work. Priest asks where's J where JD McDonald is. He say Braun Strowman is chasing him. Priest says Strowman should have been handled. He tells him to get McDonald to bring him back to the clubhouse so they can recruit. Carlito and Ballard argue over who is getting to McDonald. Video replays are, sh are shown with um, absolutely a vicious beating of Ron Breaker delivered to Kale Dixon last week on Raw. Breaker destroyed him with spear, with spears and chair to the skull. 
on on stairs. Breaker told Raw General Manager Adam Pierce did, this is because he didn't put him in the ring in the ring tournament. Later than that, Breaker speared Ricochet through a crate. Then we see a little trading from earlier today. The training cleared Ricochet for action. Raw GM Anna Pierce walked in, and Ricochet says he wants Ron Breaker. Pierce says he fined and suspended Breaker, so he has to wait. Eli Dragunov walks in and thanks Ricochet for shoving him out of the way of Breaker. When he's better, he wants to face Ricochet again. Ricochet challenges him for tonight. Dragunov says he doesn't face broken people, but Ricochet tells him he's good to go. In the arena, Ricochet makes his entrance to face Eli Dragunov next. Then we see Rick Ricochet versus Eli Dragunov now. The bell rings. Ricochet drop kicks Dragunov down. Ricochet, who has taped tape ribs from Brian Breaker's attack last week, pulls him them in pain. Ricochet upcups him. But Dragunov responds with some chops to the chest. Dragunov whips him to the opposite corner, but Ricochet slingshots him over, over him. Ricochet holds his ribs again. Dragunov applies a wrist, a wrist a waist lock, but Ricochet flips through a German suplex attempt. Ricochet knees away at Dragunov. Dragunov ducks a right hand and, and connects. Connects with a German suplex. Dragunov keeps his wrist lock on and hits another German suplex. Ricochet elbows a third of one, but Dragunov applies an abdominal stretch and elbows away at the ribs. Dragunov then grabs him between the legs and gets a modified German suplex to the bridge for a near fall. Ricochet crawls to the corner and forearms Dragunov, forearms Dragunov back. Dragunov takes him down with a step in Zaguri. Ricochet gets out of a power bomb, but Dragunov blocks a kick and it flips him onto his front. Dragunov eventually knees him into the face to knock him out of the ring. Dragunov bites the rope. We, we, we return from the break to see Dragunov and Ricochet exchanging strikes. Dragunov stuns him with a kick to super head. Dragunov stuns him with a kick to the head and snaps and, and hits a snap German suplex. Dragunov hits, hits the ropes and Sets up a German and sets up a Constantine special. But Ricochet officially needs him to the face and knock him out of the ring. Ricochet hits a hits the ropes and hits a suicide dive. Ricochet hold, pulls his ribs in and and, and pain and gets a um ribs in and pain gets a back in the ring. Drawing up is a stumbling rings stumbling around ringside, Ricochet hits, a, hits the ropes again and goes for a suicide dive, but Dragunov catches him and hits, drives him hard into the ring and apron. Dragunov goes for a power bomb, but Ricochet lands on the apron and knocks him back. Ricochet hits a big moonsault and knocks Block off on the second rope to the floor. The crowd chants, this is awesome, this is awesome. Ricochet, Ricochet gets dragging off in the ring and goes for a top rope. Ricochet sets up a 6.30, but he lands on his feet when Dragunov moves. Dragunov boots him to the face, but Ricochet rebounds, rebounds with some strikes. Dragunov, Dragunov pulls him to his feet and turns him with a leg with a Considine special. Dragunov covers 1-2, then Ricochet kicks out. Dragunov chops him down in the corner and hits the ropes. And hits the ropes. Ricochet pops up for a super kick attempt, but Dragunov blocks it. Dragunov crushes him with a power bomb, but he is too exhausted to follow up. Dragunov heads to the top rope and, and comes flying off for an H bomb, but Ricochet super kicks him out of the midair. Ricochet connects a recoil and covers one two. Dragunov just barely kicks out. Ricochet is stunned and starts to pull off to the, the top rope. Dragunov cuts him off and with a right hand and climbs to the second 
throat. Ricochet closes away as Dragunov, but Dragunov shakes it off. Ricochet hit butts him a few times to knock him, knock him but the Panavis Ricochet gets a beautiful shooting star right press and rolls around in pain from the rib. All of a sudden, Bronx Breaker kills Ricochet with a spear. The referee calls for a bell. Oh boy. Here we go, and more damage. Breaker whips off his shirt and is fired up. Breaker isn't supposed to be here tonight. Dragunov tries to chop at Breaker, but Breaker shakes it off, hits the ropes, and wipes him out with a spear. General Manager Adam Pierce runs down with WWE officials and producers to get in. Producers. Pierce gets in the ring and screams at Breaker. But Breaker doesn't acknowledge him. Breaker leaves the ring, and Pierce follows him. Breaker stops. Breaker stops and angrily turns to the face of the Raw General Manager before walking off again. Yep, this is it. He drops, he falls off. And damn. Ron Breaker spears him. Yep. He a good match, didn't he? John Steiner's big Papa Punk stunt father, big Papa Punk son. Wait. Rick Steiner's son. Rick Steiner's son won a good match, didn't he? Isn't this a terrible show, isn't it? It's a terrible show tonight. Ron Breaker is hard of hearing. He's told not to be here. That's going to be a thousand dollar fine. How ignorant is that? He was ignorant. How ignorant is Ron Brecker? Is he that ignorant? Very ignorant, isn't he? I get this. Um, I gotta disagree with uh WrestleView.com. This is what he said. He said another fantastic outgoing with Ricochet. And Eagle Eye Dragunov, despite the non finish, it doesn't take away the, from the fact that they were having a killer match before Brown Breaker. For Brown Breaker interference. Breaker looks like a monster. And I love it, he says. This is terrible. It's terrible. Now we we'll go to the backstage segment. Kathy Kelly is backstage. We see Raw General Manager Adam Pierce berating Brock Brownberg about the attack. Kelly wants to interview Pierce, but Keon James walks up to him. Pierce says they need to, need to head to his office but, but because he needs a drink. Kelly says she'll try to get a word with Pierce later. Then we see Miz and our truth, a little ice cream thing, a little Memorial Day and all that stuff. Then we see Karen Cross walking up to Kofi, talking some trash and stuff, running his mouth. Then we see the officers of pain making their way to the ringside um, alongside Ringside Karen Cross Scarlet, WWE Hall of Famer Paul Aaron, and the final test of the final the Fix and Creed Brothers. And that match starts. We saw all them budding heads and all that stuff. And then, and then, and then, and then, then uh, I know what I saw tonight. I saw the deal, um, the tag team deal, Nick, Powerbomb Neck Burn combo, uh, Paul, you know, Paul, what a rush tribute to the Legion Junior. The rest of the yeah, tribute to the Hawk and Animal, the, yeah. That's for Paul Allen is getting there for their buddies hawking animal there in heaven right now. I missed him too. And uh, you know, all, all I can say is this. Rush. Yep. Now from recipe.com, he says it's hard to characterize the final testament's brief one on SmackDown. It's anything that other at this point. It seems like they're focusing the group's group on Raw. The same against New Day. 
permission, but I have concerns about carrying a cross. Cares about um yeah. Ray Mysterio says Carlito was welcome into the LWO with open arms. If he hadn't taken the path that he's taken, Carlito would still be his brother. Carlito's jealousy over Dragon Lee made him made him bitter because bitter um bitter. His attack on Cruz. Del Toro was a huge mistake. Carlito can run to the Judgment Day. Maybe they'll welcome him with up and arms as Mysterio did. The day, those days are over. When they step in the ring tonight, Carlito won't find an old friend. We'll find out what happens when he crossed the LWO. we find out what happens when he crossed the main Mysterio. Then uh, we see a little segment of Sheamus walking down stage, stage getting the gun, was talking with Rollins champion Liv Morgan in the background. Ron Strowman shouts and looks over McDonald, who runs away to hear from Seamus next. By the way, happy Memorial Day to all of you. Dan Seamus addresses Liv, Liv um, Kaiser, Blue Liv Kaiser, trying to get an explanation, and uh, Kaiser appears on Titan Tron. Then we see and they come goes out of the ring, they start fighting. Crowd channel, let them fight, let them fight. I get this from WrestleMe.com. I'm definitely interested in seeing how loser Kai Kaiser stands on his own against Sheamus. Sadly, I don't see former Imperial main Divine Bench getting this type of treatment on SmackDown. I still don't see what the value of breaking him from the stable. Then we see Lyra Vacquery, then we see back locker room segment. Lyra Vacquery is holding her ribs in the locker room. Becky Lynch comes up and says Saturday didn't go didn't go their way. It's not about winning all the time. It's about learning from each time. We either win or learn until it's time to walk away. Lynch tells Becky she got this. She's got this and bumps her fit bumps her fist with her. And Lynch walks off and tells her to um, consider knee pads. Indy Ren and Kyra Zane makes their way to the ring alongside the Kota Kashi face Lyra Vakery next. Then we see a commercial break. It said SummerSlam 2000, SummerSlam 2026 will expand in two nights in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 2026. The commentators want to know where SummerSlam 2025 will be. Let's see. I don't really give a shit about Lyra Vakery. I mean, maybe Nia Jax, a huge bitch. I don't really care. I don't know what about that. Kyrie Zane versus um, Lyra Valkyrie. Now, I don't know why, why, I don't know why, why they had two Irish women last Saturday, Saturday at um, King, of, King of Rings. I think Triple H is biased and bigoted with Irish women wrestling. Kyrie Zane versus Dakota and, 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 her, and, her, and his wife, and his wife, um, Stephanie Mann's Irish. Irish American. The last time it's been banned. So was Father Vince, and so was on um, the son Shane. Bell rings, Lyra hit, hits a um, brace lock, and you see all them bunny heads going face to face. And uh, we see a double stamp, and we just lay on and see a double stomp. And bam, you see Lyra Valkyrie getting, um, getting a victory against Kyra Zane. Since, um, since WWE, she didn't get a victory last Saturday. Saturday, WWE fucked her over. I get this from WrestleView.com. Good comeback win for Lyra Bakri. Bakri has something. Has something. I'm glad they're giving her a lot of spots to get over. They need to get the character over a bit. The in-ring stuff is good, but the fans need something to do with. Need something to do to connect with. 
And we see a little did go to the clubhouse world heavyweight champion Damian Priest asked Finn Balor and Carlito where Denny McDonough is. Priest asks what Carlito is doing here. Carlito says he wanted the judgment day in the clubhouse. Priest says Carlito isn't in the judgment day. Priest tells him to go for chair for his match. Carlito asks Balor if he still be out there. Balor technically agrees. JD McDonough walks in and Carlito said he found him. McDonald says he gave Ron Strowman the slip. Priest asks why why he was talking to Liv Morgan. McDonald says he wasn't telling Morgan she won't be women's champion for long. Priest asks where Dom, Dom, Dominic is. Dirty Dumb Dom walks in. Priest asks to speak to him alone. Valor will have McDonald leave. Priest asks Mysterio what is he doing. Mysterio says he talked to Rhea Ripley and will fix this. Priest warns him he'll fix it tonight. Who gives a shit about Rhea Ripley? In the arena, Rhea um, Rey Mysterio makes his way to the ring alongside Dragon League and Selena Vega of the Latino World Era. Mysterio face, will face Carlito next. Then we go to the Judgment Day locker room. Wow, pissed off EO Sky is sitting in on the couch. Dakota and Kyrie Zane walk in. Sky is again screaming and throwing lamps up to the top table and walks off. Exhibition um, um, baseball team is spanning bananas at ringside. And we see the match Rey Mysterio versus Carlito. And we see all of them butt heads and all that stuff. In the end of the world, in a few hours, Master Leo Pierce throws away and steals and he kicks out. All of the bars, man. What happened was this. Van Bellar appears at ringside and attacks Dragon Lee. Bauer sends him over to the commentary table. Steel hits Bauer with a seat, see a 10-pound off the apron. The stun Pat Mack lets him explode. Let's how it makes Cleta. He's pissed. Steel gets in the ring, but um, Carlito attacks. Leo sets up for a backstab. Mysterio reverses and sends him to a ring ropes. Mysterio hits 619 and, and slings our spash for the win. Mysterio celebrates the LWO before going out of the ring and attacking Finn Balor. Mysterio puts him on a commentary pair with Dragon League goes for the top rope. But the but World Order, but World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest attacks Mysterio. Khalil pulls Lee's leg, crotches him at the top rope. Priest hits Lee with a with a razor's edge. Mysterio gets in the, in the ring and knock, uh, knocks Damian Priest into position. Mysterio knocks Khalil off the apron and charges, but Priest with a big boots and big boots, with big boots. Him down. Priest hits Mysterio with a south even and stands tall in the ring. Balor and Carlito look happy at ringside, but Ang Priest Angle looks over at them, taking their smiles away. I guess from WrestleReview.com, it's been my mind when you think about how long Rey Mysterio and Carlito have been doing this. Probably how about how a century of experience between them, and they're still doing it at a high level. Amazing. A backstage segment. Chad Gable is backstage with a time at Akira Tozawa. Gable says he didn't see Tozawa in Saudi Arabia, so he must have had a good reason for not making the trip. Tozawa apologizes. Braun Strowman interrupts and demands to know if they've seen J.D. McDonald. They say no, Strowman, Strowman keeps walking. Maxine Dupree walks off with walks off with Otis. Chad Gable makes fun of them and says they'll give Otis a chance to redeem himself. The face beat. Bronson Reed. Otis will beat him. Gable makes Otis say no matter what. In the arena, big Bronson Reed makes his way to the ring to face Otis next. Then we go one-on-one. -on -one. Chad Gable's in the ring talking with Otis. The bell rings at re ambulance and goes and punches away. Then we see a little few minutes later, later on, um, Reed Kirk, uh, the match, um, 
um, and Owens lost the match. Reed crosses over with a smile for the win, the winner is big by uh, big Ross Reed. Then Chad Gable gets in the ring and shouts on the microphone for Otis and against the ring. Chad Gable Max demands maximum premium to um, also come out. They nervously come out out the ring and Chad Gable is having an Alpha Academy meeting right now. Chad Gable's in the ring with Alpha Academy. Gable sneers at Otis. I mean, someone, I mean, let me see. Someone's got to stand up. I mean, someone has, I mean, he acting like a act like a bully tonight. Gable sneers at Otis, but does not look happy. Gable asks, "What is he going to do with Otis? Not only is he going to cost him the kind of champion on Saturday. I'm sorry, really, but he gave another chance, but he blew it. Gable knows how to get through it to Otis. Otis likes this one, so Gable will show him this one from everybody here. Gable says he doesn't want to do this, so he starts unbuckling his belt. Gable says Otis made him do this. Gable tells Otis to grab the rope. Otis doesn't, Otis doesn't move, so Gable orders him to grab the rope. Otis slowly makes his way over to the rope and grabs the top rope with his back. Gable. Gable tells Maxim to free and cowards is out. And the coward is out to watch because this is what happens when you follow the Alpha Academy. Gable says this will hurt him more than it hurts Otis. Gable smacks at Otis with a belt. Maxim the free stops him. Gable yells at her to get out of the ring. She sadly leaves, but Gable asks Tazawa if asks Tazawa. Ask if Zara has anything to say. Gable goes to hit Otis. But any kind of champion is the same as any ag angrily makes his way to the ring. Gable's just saying turn turn around unless he's giving him the rightful title shot. The same champ picks up. Gable warns him not to take another step, but Zane ignores him and gets in the ring. Zane asks Gable, what's he going to do? Zane, um, Zane asks Gable, Zane asks Gable, says Gable isn't tough. Gable is a weak little man. Gable sneers at him. Zane, Zane says, Zane says he has manipulated his way to the Intercontinental Championship opportunities and comes out short each time. Gable, Gable wants to blame everyone else. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad. No, I'm really glad. Glad. Maxine Dupree, um, I mean, his abuse of power and all that crap, um, same, same I mean, from, from Chad Gable. Some of these, uh, some, some of them, I mean, Maxine Dupree, Maxine did the right, right thing tonight. Yeah, he says, Sammy Zane, he says, Gable wants to blame everyone else. People, Sammy Sam Zane, Alpha Academy, it's no one else but Gable. Gables can't, can't 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 get the job done. Gable um says Zane doesn't know what he's talking about. He beat Zane last week on Raw and we have not done it this Saturday if it wasn't for that idiot Otis. Gable goes to whip Otis, but Sammy Zane rips the bell away from him. Sammy throws down throws down the title and approaches Gable and but Otis stands in his way. Zane asks Otis what is he gonna do? Is he going to listen to Gable? How much more will he take? Zane told, to, told Otis to stop listening to Gable and listen to the people. The crowd cheers for Otis. Zane tells Otis to listen. If they can't hear him, him he then he sent he and he needs to start listening to his heart. Gable blindsides Zane and punches away at him. Punches away at him in the corner. But Zane fights back and and takes him down and Takes him down, but Otis pull, always pulls Zane off Gable. Zane talks the sense into Otis, but Gable wipes him out with a clean German suplex. Gable takes his jacket off and mounts Zane for punching away at him. Gable talks trash to Zane. Otis teases like he's going to act, but he doesn't. But he doesn't do anything. Gable throws down the Intercontinental Champion down onto Zane. The crowd loudly chants, "Let's go, Otis!" But he doesn't do anything. Chad, 
Gable leaves the ring with Cesaro, but Otis doesn't follow him. Gable shouts at Otis to follow, follow and she completely obliges. Good set segment with Chad bringing Otis on for Otis to do nothing. We're getting close to happen. I said this was terrible. I mean, someone needs to stand, stand up this this chart, this, this pump. Okay, right now it's 12. Wow, time really goes fast. 12 on 1. Right now here in Indianapolis, right now where I am. It's now Monday, May 28, 2004. Wow, time, this is, time really goes fast here, isn't it? Video, the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour coming with Victor over Becky Lynch for the Women's World for the women's World Championship pet, um, this past Saturday. At the WWE Queen and King of the Ring. Women's World Champion Liv Morgan is stretching backstage. Elsewhere backstage, Becky Lynch is pacing. The steel cage match is lowering around the ring. The main event is next. Kathy Kelly is backstage with um, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. They are the number one contenders for the women, whatever your women's tag team championship. Stark says they've never been properly introduced. Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Selena Deville walks up and says they're not talking like they're champions, but they're not. They cannot do it without her help. Baszler and Stark walk off on the bill. Alba Fire and Nyla Dawn stop Baszler and Stark. They mention that Baszler and Stark haven't faced haven't faced or beaten them yet. They won't change. The bill says Fire and Don have no respect. Well, um, Tony the Bill is the last one to talk. What she did to Mandy Rose. Next week on Raw, Sheamus will battle Ludwig Kaiser. We'll see the we'll also see the New Day take on Offers of Pain. In a non-title match, World Heavyweight Champion Dan Priest will, walk, will battle World Heavyweight will call WWE Hall of Fame Marine Mysterio. Now it's time for the Steel Cage match. The man Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan. Becky Lynch, whose WWE contract Liv Morgan expires this Saturday, could be king, king in her final match final WWE match for some time. Lynch was supposedly to take some time off before being called back to action. Called back to action following the injury to Rhea Ripley. This is this is terrible. Don't I mean I mean I mean are they I mean I am they were there I mean they're gonna release Becky Lynch to tell me. What well, I do, you're gonna you're gonna shove Rhea Ripley in our throats and all that crap, and, and we have to win back the um the WWE the Rollins title, which she doesn't deserve because she only got that title because the judgment day she had it long enough. The 2024, not 2020, not 2021. I mean, or or 2022. I don't know. Wait, what year did she do Brie Ripley came to work? Um, I think that was 2021. Yeah, I think it was 2021. I think it was 2021. I don't know, 2022, I think. Also. Let's get to the match. We join this match in progress. Morgan digs it, digs and lifts his face into the steel, step, steel mesh and rubs it around a bit. Morgan drives her hard into the steel cage, cage wall and presses her against it. Morgan rubs Lynch's face on steel mesh and happily shouts, Hi, Rhea. Yeah, I, li I like what she said. I like what she said. I, I love what she said. Hi, I Rhea. I love, love that part. That made, me, that, made me, that made me laugh. Like Morgan said, that made me laugh. What she said, because she was, because, um, she cracked me. Little Morgan cracked me up yesterday when she said, Hi, Rhea. I, I, I got a really good feeling they're gonna put that that Raw Women's title back on back on Rhea Ripley, which is stupid because Becky Lynch got screwed. I mean, 
I, I don't know. I don't know what the, what's going on with WWE. Morgan stops climbing to the cage of the corner of the ring, but Lynch climbs, climbs, climbs after her. Lynch pulls her down the rope, to the top rope begin and begin battling to. They begin battling on the top rope, and Morgan bounces Lynch's face off the steel, steel a number of times before knocking her down to the mat. Morgan gets down from the top rope and attacks, but Lynch sends her to the corner. Sends her to the corner. Morgan drops her. Drops her between the cage, cage wall, and the ropes. Lynch knocks her back into the back and goes to the top rope. But Morgan costs her off. Lynch is handling, handling, hanging on the top rope, and Morgan drives her face into the steel wall a few times. Morgan stands up for her, stands up for her, drops kick, drop kicks her into the cage wall three times. Lynch is barely getting any defense. Morgan shows away at her and, and, and charges. It, but she hits the cage wall head first. When Lynch moves, Lynch kicks away at Morgan and wildly smashes her face into the steel cage, cage wall. Lynch heads up to the top rope and connects with us with a missile drop kick. Lynch kick um um Lynch crawls over and um, Lynch crawls over and, and covers the champ for a two count. Lynch hits the ropes for it, ropes and drop kicks Morgan with a steel cage wall. Lynch hits the ropes and repeats the move. Lynch uppercuts and spin kicks Morgan. Lynch goes for a sec for a leg um, drop off the second rope. Where she lands on her feet and when Morgan moves, Morgan pulls Lynch face first from the steel cage wall. Back from the sec from the commercial final break of the evening, there are six minutes left for, for WWE Dub Raw. Morgan is climbing to the cage in the corner of the ring, but Lynch cuts her off. Lynch quickly sh scales the ropes to pull Morgan down. Morgan knocks her out, knocks her out the ropes, but Lynch quickly pops back, and Lynch connects with a suplex and crawls off her for a two count. Lynch goes for a disarm her, but Morgan shoves her into the steel cage into the cage wall. Morgan connects for a springboard code breaker and covers for a veneer fall. Morgan shouts in frustration. Morgan starts to climb in the cage in the corner of the ring and pulls her leg over the top rope. Three steel trellis. Lynch follows up up there and, and punches her punches her away. Lynch punches Morgan into the back into the ring. Lynch is is now half over his trellis, but desperately drags her back into the ring in the last moment. Morgan pulls her off the top rope, but gets a big power bomb for a near fall. Morgan sees getting up against the ropes and goes on and goes for a living. But Lynch moves. Lynch moves. Lynch then um, applies for the sound run and on the ropes. Morgan screams in pain before shoving her, her face into the steel cage, cage wall. Cage wall. Morgan starts to climb, but Lynch hits the side leg sweep off the middle rope for a near fall. Then we see Dirty Dum Dum run, running down, opens the cage gauge with three shots for Lynch to exit the cage. Ben Ballard and Jenny Manor run down to ask Mysterio, what's he doing? What's he doing? Wait. Wow, Mysterio asked for Lynch to wait. Was Mysterio, wait, was, was Mysterio, is Mysterio trying to, is Mysterio help, is, um, is helping Becky Lynch? Oh, I think he, well, I think he's trying to wait for the exit of the case so he can knock her out. Finn Balor and Jenny McDonald run down to ask Mysterio what he's, what he's doing and tell him to stay out of this. All of a sudden, Braun Strowman runs down the door, runs down and stare, starts to chase Balor and McDonald. Strowman circles the ring and crashes into Mysterio, who eventually stands the cage towards and breaks Lynch's head. Morgan crawls the cage door and to retain her title. And the winner, still live, still with Raw Women's Champion, Liv Morgan. Well, it really wasn't. I'll say, um, two people are. are it, it's two people's fault. It's it's Liv, it's Dirty Dum Dum and Braun Strowman because Braun Strowman accidentally hit Liv Morgan, hit Becky Lynch steel cage door. It's both their fault. Becky got screwed again. 
Yeah, Dirty Down on Steers at Liv Morgan. She walks off with the Rollins champion. He, like, he's not happy with what she did to Rock with Liv Rhea Ripley. But your bit, your girlfriend brought it on yourself, dumb dumb. She started by breaking her arm. But I see some dissension. I think you probably it might um. I think probably they might um they might that dumb dumb might probably might cheat on Rhea Ripley the um. She not Rhea Ripley. Go with uh Liv Morgan, just like just like they did pulled off with one way when when, yeah he's gonna um betray Liv Rhea Ripley. Help Liv Morgan like like Lita betray Kane, go with Edge. I get this from Wrestle um, com. It says mediocre stable cage match with Liv and Becky Lynch. It felt like they got cut cut. By the end, they were racing through things to get to the finish. Pretty creative to get, get Dum Dum involved in the finish by having Strong run them over. He said, hey, Michael Cole and Comfort said, Damn you, Dum Dum. Damn you, Dum Dum. Well, but Michael Cole, if you want to blame somebody, blame the only, the, the, um, dumb, um, the only person, the only, the only, you shouldn't even, you should blame Dum Dum. You also blame Bob Strowman. He's the one that knocked out Becky Lynch with a steel cage door when Becky was trying to climb out to win the get, win, win the match, become Rollins champion again. I get this. This is just um some um recipe.com says he highly doubt this is Becky Lynch's final match, final WWE match for her contract with Jeremy Spires on Saturday. She was due to take some time off at the WrestleMania, but did a solid did a solid did a solid by returning after Ripley's injury to properly give Blue more and Give title to Liv Morgan. Hopefully she'll take she'll take she'll take uh she'll take time off WrestleMania, but they did a solid they, but they did wait, they did a solid by returning after Ripley's injury. Properly give the title to Liv Morgan. Hopefully, she'll take some time, take some time to recharge her batteries and revamp her character. It's getting, it's been getting a little stale. I really don't give a shit about Rhea Ripley anyway. She got what she used there in Soldier Judgment Day. And, I, and you know, and um, I, 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 I mean, I mean. I think they I think it's wait she's going so she's gonna get released on Saturday. Becky Lynch. She's gonna get released on Saturday. I mean last night was just a terrible show, just terrible. I got a gut feeling that they're gonna um um put put the raw woman's title back on re-rip re -rip, and this would be a joke uh, be, be shitty the WWE. I mean I mean I mean I mean, she didn't deserve. Rhea Ripley doesn't deserve to have the Rollins, the, the Rollins title in the first place. I mean, I mean after, I mean after with, with the um Liv Morgan um broke her arm. Did do they put it back on her? It would be, it would be, 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 be um, a, um, be the worst mistake of their lives. Cause you should get, get, I mean, give it to somebody else. Give it to someone like Lyra Valkyrie or. Or 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 some um um or they all like like Lyra Valkyrie. Now he says that last night and I was saying the rest of the time this was like like last night was a good more the addition of, of Raw. Nothing earth sh shattering. Uh, nothing earth shattering happened on the show, but it was a waste of time. This show was ter terrible last night. Very freaking terrible. Hated it. Completely hated it. Oh boy. Shitty. Wait. I'm um, stupid in a shit storm. In Savannah last night. 
I hope all of you um agree um um agree with everything how how terrible the show was last night. Shitty, wait, stupid in the shitstorm in Savannah. That's my little review for all of you about um tonight's um last night's uh raw. Let's see, um, I don't see that I'm going to do something for all of you tonight, I mean, today, this from the midnight, I'm going to do, uh, give you my time capsule of all the wrestling history, wrestling birthdays, and pop culture, Saturday. Sunday and last Monday. Okay. Let's see. Oh, one second, everybody. Stupid computer. Hey, hold on, right back. Hold on, one second. Okay, uh, let's see, um, I know, uh, Roman Reigns turned 39 last Saturday, and, uh, Bo Dallas' brother of the late Bray, Bray Wyatt and the son of, uh, W.D. Hall of Famer IRS, Aaron Asher Mike returned to turn 34 last Saturday. I already mentioned Total Divas, um, Digging the Hole episode, and the movie, um, 
um, Beverly Hills Cop 3, third sequel, uh, 1990, um, 1984's Beverly Hills Cop, and um, sequel to 1987's Beverly Hills Cop 2, starring Eddie Murphy was released on May, um, May 26th, Sunday. Okay, Natalia turned uh, 44 last Saturday, W Dollar WWE Hall of Famer Jim Neville Nyhart. Let's see, Ashley Massaro, um, late Ashley Massaro. Turned 45, I believe, but she went 45. I believe she she died she had, she had, um she killed herself in a little suicide committed suicide and on uh Impact Wrestling on two thousand four I mean I mean NWA TNA Weekly Show World Cup the World Cup X take the guards are defeated um. Negro, Bobby Roode, Saban, Daniels, Billy Skipper, Eric Young, Heavy Metal, John, John, John Jerry Lynn, Diane Devine, Zawa, Bashiri, um, Hazari Jr., Mr. Aguilar, High Rod P. Williams, and Tashi Gary for Gauntlet for the gold. Christopher Daniels and Eve Scooter defeated Bobby Roode and um, Johnny Devine. Mishi Shikari um, Jr. and Takashi um, Gazara and defeated um, Negro and then Heavy Metal. Eric Young defeated Jerry Lynn, Mr. Aguilar, and Takashi Shiri in a ladder of four way. Chris Saban defeated Hector Garza and P. Wing in um, Ultimate X three way. And on 2014, on Monday Night Raw, um, April, um, May 26, 2014, the um let's see um I believe um this this days after payback on pay per view let's see um Yeah, the little contract signing. Yeah, the contract. It was a contract signing between the um, Evolution and uh. It was a little contract signing between Evolution and, and uh um Shield. Meet for pay payback. Well, so when we go to uh, no contract signing, and uh, let's see what else. Um, let's go to yesterday's uh, May, May the twenty seventh. Uh, May the 27th. Monday Night Raw, um, Paul Heyman, uh, two, um, in SmackDown, uh, 1994, two movies released in theaters nationwide. The Flintstones, starring John Goodman, based on cartoons, starring John Goodman, Rosie O'Donnell, Rick Moranis, and Elizabeth Perkins, which time at, on they, they, um, May 27, 1994. Also co starring Halle Berry in the Kyle McLaughlin movie. Little Boo starring Keanu Reeves, Chris Isaac, um, Isaac I believe, and uh, Bridget Fonda was released. 
in uh, um, see, May, uh, 2004, Monday Night Raw, and SmackDown, Paul Heyman still steals The Undertaker's urn. And a happy birthday goes out yesterday to Yesterday was a happy um seventy. Oh, I'm sorry. Sixty ninth birthday to Eric Bischoff, WWE Hall of Famer. And uh, let's see. Now, two thousand and fourteen on Monday night on uh, WWE main event. Oh wait, hold on. Um, uh, Madison Square Garden series in New Japan, nineteen seventy four. Missy Hat Kauri defeated Anatnita. Masio Kama um and Mai Suzuki defeated Ido and Hada. John Ross defeated Shang and Zoyo. Thunder you um Yama defeated Mr. Fuji. Spiro Sonata defeated um, Tetsuwada, Moose Marizaka defeated Takashido, Destroy defeated El Takya, John Baba and, and Jumbo Saruta defeated Real Monsoon and Kevin Solomon, put out three falls tag match. And see well I uh, oh none of us has got um uh got Metro oh, from um for um for uh May the twenty sixth for nineteen eighty four. Uh Kevin Sullivan, uh see I think um I think uh Terry Van Bayer um Terry Bowie face off against Rick Flair um in the NW title match and um World Class Championship Wrestling, I think. From Georgia Championship Wrestling, see, from Georgia Championship, NWA Georgia Championship Wrestling. May the 26th, 1984. Hold on a second. Okay, um, clips um, uh, are from Georgia Championship Wrestling, May 26, 1984, Saturday. Um, clips from um, John Jim Kirk promotion. Jimmy Bowling gets gives uh, Miss Linda Flowers streak. Then Kale is bowling with a load of glove and paints his face. Match card: Jake the Snake, Rod Jake Roberts versus Randy Robert, Nikolai Volkov versus Jason Walker, Billy Jack Haynes versus Joe Turner, and National Tag Champions um, Road Warriors versus Roger Brown, Bob Brown. Ted DiBiase versus Joe Turner. Interviews include the likes of Ole Anderson, Jack Hain, um, Billy Jack Haynes, King Kong Bunny, and Jake and Ted, Jake Roberts and Ted DiBiase. Yep. And uh, that's it. Oh, I don't see. Um, oh, from uh, wait, uh, let's say, uh, hold on. Main event two thousand uh, from WWE main event two 
Um, Curtis Axel Axel will ride back to defeat Cody Rhodes and Goldust. Our truth defeated Damian Sam Brown and Ty defeated Brie Bella. Hmm. After her belated birthday, Nikki Bella, the Wire family with Eric Rowan, Eric Rowan and Lil Poppy defeated the Usos, Jimmy and Jay. Now I'm chatting no more. And uh, that's it. So subscribe to me, Godfather Soldiers. So learn to hit like, man, comment, video. And um, I got some. I'm gonna close out the show with all you. The song I just played for all of you. Um, just about a minute ago, about, about an hour ago, called um, "Meet the Flintstones" by B52. It's BC52 from the Flintstones movie soundtrack, released in 1994. So here it is to close out the show. And um, hope all of you have a good midnight. Sleep good. And get me some rest too. I'm out of here. Peace. By one more thing. If only we had Stephanie McMahon as a new general, a new back as a new chairwoman, turning as a new chairman of WWE. If only we do, once Vince is found guilty, maybe he'll, he'll, um, he'll make Triple H do everything she tells her to do. Stop making stuff and nine ejection our throats and all that shit. Good night, everybody. Hope all of you have a yabba that would do time. Rock. Yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do time, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do. Let's go, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do. Yep, have a yabba dabba do time, all of you. So have a day on time. Well done. I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Good night. Good midnight, everybody. And um, as, as late Chad Henshaw used to say, I used to dress so like Chad Chubby Chuck could dance like Lemon Richie. I mean, sing like Larry Richie, dance like James Brown. I could get in the hot tub, it's gonna be wet. I'm gonna be swag, it's gonna be wet. Good night, have a good midnight, everybody. And, um, uh, peace.